Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KidAdger.com here to bring you another gear review. And today we're talking about this right here, which is the Uberlieben flat pack stove. What is it? It is exactly what it sounds like. It's a twig stove that packs flat. And it comes in a number of pieces and it goes together pretty easy. Being flat pack, it obviously packs flat and it comes with this unwaxed canvas bag, which it's actually really handy. Usually what I will do is, as I'm cruising along and I come across good fire making stuff, whether it be dry moss or maybe occasionally like a birch tree or something like that, I will take a handful of birch bark or like I said, dry moss, stuff that's basically gonna catch and do a good job for you to get a fire started like if you're throwing sparks or something like that. If you're using something that's going to have a flame, like a lighter or something, you can get away with a lot of basically pretty much anything if you can keep a flame going long enough like you can light. But when it comes to things trying to catch a spark, it can be more difficult. So try and, try and basically gather stuff up as I go so that when I do need to start this thing, it's easy to do so. And you have these pieces, they all go together. The front right here coming together as the last piece. And there you are. You have the bottom, there's plenty of ventilation to include along the sides. And this right here is the mouth to the cinder box. There are two other pieces inside this bag and they're basically cross members. So if you're putting a pot or whatever it is on top, it won't fall down into your fire. As I sift through other random pieces of bark and fatwood that I've collected and I usually just keep in there. But you have these two pieces, makes a little X and drop it on here. like such, and now you can start your fire. Have I used this thing? Yes, I have used it a lot. My first outing, actually having never used it, I got it in, I was like, cool, I'm gonna go up Strawberry Mountain. It was late spring, 2019. I know there was a lot of snow up there. I also know there's no like standing water. So I was gonna have to melt snow for my water. Took this up there having never used it before. I'd seen a buddy of mine, Matt from Jerking the Trigger. He has a similar stove. I was like, those are pretty cool. And I ended up getting this flat pack from Uber Lieben. I was like, let's try this. Went up there and sure enough, it absolutely worked. I ended up melting all my water for that two day trip as well as cooking all my meals on it. This thing did a really rad job. Since then I've used it a bunch more, whether it's out cooking ramen with my boys, some of our adventures, or just going out with friends and firing this thing up, whether it was other camping trips or some backpacking, or even just hikes out into the woods just to be out in the woods and go make some coffee and stuff like that. Use this thing quite a bit. I definitely have some takeaways having used it. I do think the firebox kind of had a sweet spot with respect to these type of stoves. It's big enough to where you don't have to constantly be feeding stuff into it, but again, you're not gonna walk away for like 15 minutes and have this thing still going when you come back. Like you need to maintain it. But you can get away with packing a lot of stuff in there and having it burn pretty good for a while. Because of the laws of thermodynamics, all that science stuff, you of course want to get something lit and have it burn up, heat, all that stuff, right? Well. It can be tricky getting this lit sometimes in that you have this metal piece on top if you're gonna be boiling water and your pot won't be supported by the top dimensions of this. So how do you get it started? Of course, ideally you get it started down here. It can be difficult to throw sparks into here. And so lots of times I will leave this off, try and get it started either in the top and then feed stuff in and kind of push it down throwing sparks in there, or I will basically throw this on there and try and get it started through this grate. I've made it work. It does work. 
I will say this lends itself much more to getting something lit down here and throwing sparks into this little hole can be difficult. So you either start with a little bird nest outside of this stove or you use something like this, which is the tinder wick, also from Uberlieben, or a lighter for that matter. Something that can basically give you a flame so that you have controlled ignition down at the bottom. And it honestly just makes it way easier to get this thing going. Because this isn't super heavy gauge steel, which isn't a bad thing, you don't want extra weight. But due to that, you can, depending on how patient you are, if you just try and quench this thing in the snow when it's fire hot, you can end up warping it. I don't think I've warped any of the large panels, but I've definitely warped these guys because they are pretty small. And does it make it ineffective? No. It can make it pretty challenging to get these guys to sit right in here. So just something to be aware of. Am I gonna start a fire for you right now? Inside this. I am not. I could probably go find some dry wood. It would take a lot of work. It is out there, but I don't want to go through the process right now, which honestly brings us into where does this thing really shine? Kind of when it is not wet. You can always find dry wood if you have the tools to find it, especially being out here like this. You probably want a saw and a method of splitting, whether it's a hatchet or I don't know, whether you're batoning or something like that. Dry wood can be found, but in those seasons where it is cold and wet, where it's like 33 degrees and all the snow is melting and it's raining, not the place I want to use this. If it's really cold, there is snow, but it's dry. You can find dry stuff, you can make it work. Or obviously any other time when it's not wet. Summer months, fall, stuff along those lines, spring, anytime it's not wet basically. This thing will do a good job for you. The beauty of twig stoves is you can most always find twigs. So barring being in a desert, you're always going to be able to find fuel for this, even if it's really cold. Whereas sometimes some of the mixed like butane, propane canisters, when it gets really cold, they don't work. So while you might have this perfect little pocket stove, that's cool, right up to the point where it doesn't work. This, it's fire, man. It'll work. Another added benefit of this is if you've ever tried to cook over like an open campfire, the heat is not contained at all. It, it's difficult, your heat's going everywhere. This, obviously it's concentrated, it boils water fairly quickly or pretty much whatever else you put on there as far as cooking goes. And it's much easier to get a fire started here than just on open ground. In addition to that though, if you actually want a campfire, what's really nice is you can get an amazing coal bed in here and this thing raging and then just dump it out and start building your fire on top of it. it makes getting a campfire going so much easier. If you want to pick one up you can do so over on Amazon about 38 bucks for stainless or 62 for titanium. Half the weight twice the price. They're pretty cool though. I like stick stoves one just for the fact that you can pretty much find fuel for them anywhere. And the fact that this actually packs flat makes it really easy to carry as well. If you have experience with these or pick one up and then have experience with them, let me know how it does for you. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.